Welcome to our Meet the Experts film costume design panel. We're joined here by Ruth E. Carter from Coming to America, Janty Yates from House of Gucci, Kirsty Cameron from The Power of the Dog, and Clinton Ramos from Respect. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, way back uh, to the beginning with, of your careers. So when did you guys uh, realize that costume design could be a career for you? Uh, Kirsty? Uh, post art school, um, I did started doing some work with Nikki Caro and that was um, after making clothes and from when I was a teenager and just really wanting, loving, um, loving style so much I um I kind of like put it all together when Nikki asked me to um to to work with her on some films and it sort of just pennies dropped and yeah so that was a, a long time ago really now and I did her first feature um uh called Memory and Desire um back in the 90s um and that's yeah that's really when it when it sort of happened for me in terms of under that understanding uh, Janty? When I was 11 and I found my grandmother's treadle sewing machine and I just didn't look back. I just was making clothes constantly. I was making them with patterns, without patterns. I was drawing every single day, 100 drawings every day. And after I left dress design, dress pattern cutting, and um, making dressmaking college, I realized you had to have a huge amount of money to become a designer, fashion designer, or you had to sleep under your cutting table, a la Galliano, and produce 11 works of art twice a year. And I just thought, I don't think I'm that talented. <laughs> You know, you have to be quite extreme, I think, to do fashion, even though I loved it with a passion. I also went and did um, wholesale fashion, and that was just so soul-destroying in the city. It was a very big company, and it was, I just thought, no, it's not for me. So I started to work in commercials as an assistant, 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 but <laughs> no money. and. Uh, just gradually, gradually built up from there. Probably 10 years later, did my first half hour film. And then it went on and just slowly, slowly, but surely blossomed. Mm -hmm. um, Clint, what about you? Um, I, I, you know, I come to costume design from the theater. Uh, so, I, you know, um, I, 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 I wanted to be a director when I was young, so I, I but I didn't, uh, I quickly discovered that I didn't have that, um, I, I didn't have that thing, you know, where you could actually tell people to do things. I, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't, I, <laughs> I didn't have that, 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 that thing. And, and, and I, and I, and I love the idea that I could be uh, both public and private with costume design, that it was insular and, and I could be outward as well. You know, I'd be like, I could be in, in my studio or I could like, you know, be with the makers and, and the people. But I, I think it was that, like, I think I, I fell in love with storytelling uh, and not necessarily fashion although I, I you know i when when janty says 11 years old i remember being you know like really young and you know my favorite hangout was my mother's dressing room and um and this was the 70s and i would look at her getting transformed you know from you know her day wear to she's she'd be going out to a party and you know all the lashes the teasing of the hair and everything and i you know i'd be it was a wonder to me. I'd, I'd look at her and be like, "Look at you! Look at what you just did!" You know, and and I fell in love with that. And I, I and I guess that's that's how I kind of connected all of those dots. You know, and I ended up in costume design. Mm -hmm. Nice again, again with your mom. So <laughs> always, always mother. <laughs> uh, Ruth. Well, when I look back, um, I can say that I was introduced to storytelling first. My two brothers are uh, visual artists. Um, my uh, older of the two brothers was really a painter and 
had shows around and we thought he was the artist of the family and none of us measured up to him. We just, we just idolized my older brother. Um, and then my brother who's younger, younger and closer to my age, he and I would draw these characters all the time. We do it in our books, in the corners of our books. And we had we had a mouse that was like Stuart Little, who was like a Black Panther with a beret and a fist in the air. And so I, I just love the creative process from the start. And I don't know how young I was, but I know that I was around materials and creative crayons and craypaws and pastels and chocolate and and so as I got into theater first I knew that there were these elements of my life that would converge and that was being able to enjoy prose and playwrights like Langston Hughes and I could actually visualize these characters that they talked about in these tenements in New York City. And I very much felt connected to the people and the interesting ways that they were described in literature. And I wanted that, uh, those images to come to life when I was working in theater. And so I kind of feel like I didn't have a fashion approach to costume design. I really did have a theatrical one and a, and a passion for telling African American stories that, you know, going back in the 40s in Harlem, I really wanted to bring James Vanderzee to life and Teeny Harris. And, and it wasn't until I was actually like working on a film where I had to get into fashion, like Mo Better Blues, that I discovered like Columbus Avenue in New York. And and 7th Avenue and I had assistants who were coming out of fashion and it was like a foreign language to me and I had to hurry up and learn that stuff because I wanted to age and die something I wanted to, you know, rip the pocket in the corner or, or let the ink explode in the uh, breast pocket. Mm -hmm. I was more into uh, painting the costume than creating a fashion statement. And that's when I realized that I was a storyteller. I've never ever considered myself an artist. Like I said, my older brother is the only artist in our family and, and he still paints and does beautiful. He's retired. So now he's painting little dog, people's dogs, you know, but um, because of that um, side of things, I grew to love the storytelling aspect and, and the depth of people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And you could tell, you know, full stories through costumes as well. So, yeah. Uh, well, you guys work so closely with actors. Can you talk about the importance of uh, forming that relationship and, and building that trust, uh, Janti? Well, I find, um, obviously, I get my brief from my director, but I find, and then I will do my selections. If you don't have a happy actor and you don't, you don't have a good you don't have a happy performance so it has to be collaborative it has to be you know if she or he hates something then i just throw it away it's fine you know there's another suit or there's another frock or something out there space suit whatever <laughs> you know we can just rebuild um so it's always been they they've become dear friends and really it's always been so important to actually just make sure that they're happy they're comfy as well as you know looking excuse me shit hot <laughs> that's that's the most important so <laughs> yeah yeah uh clint um, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I, I lay a lot of foundation to, to establish a, a trust, you know, and particularly with, um, with respect, you know, I, 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 I work with a lot of like, uh, exemplary actors you know um and and, and with jennifer like you, i i did a, I, I i did a lot of homework i wanted to make sure i was ready for every meeting you know um and you know i was able to answer questions for her but also kind of like guide her through the trajectory of it you know and then eventually i think for me when once you establish that trust you've 
you've become an ally to their craft. You know, you've become their uh, sort of the first kind of the front line uh, uh, worker for their craft. And, and, and I love being that. I love being on set with Jennifer and trying to figure out how the costume moved and how, you know, what she needed for that particular scene and how I could assist in that. Like, did, this, did, she, did she want to feel constricted in this scene? Did she want to take up space in the scene? But, you know, so all of that were um, considerations. And, uh, you know, you're, 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 you are their biggest ally in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Ruth? Oh, um, well, the costume is almost like another character because you stand in the room with the actor and you develop the idea and you develop it through several uh, different situations and different, you know, scenes and settings. And I like that actors want to collaborate. And sometimes, you know, you get actors that really do trust you and want you to take it to the next level. And uh, so a consultation is always great, but I think that they really want you to do their best, your best work by bringing to the table, you know, all of the elements that help create this, uh, this costume, this character for them, uh, that, that, that supports them and supports their performance. So um, it is a process, it's highly collaborative. Um, I like to be on the same page, but I also like to bring uh, elements that they weren't expecting and um, that really give them joy to, to wear. So, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Kirsty? Um, I th- you know, we've all, everyone's talked about trust, which I think is such a huge um, component of, of the relationship. Um, I like to create a really, have, have a sort of very creative space that we can both occupy and, um, and sort of meet in the middle of. I mean, often in working in New Zealand, actors, you don't have very long with actors because they fly in from, if they're international actors, they fly in and their time here is quite truncated um, in terms of prep. So I have to be extremely prepared for that. And I mean, that's psychologically prepared as well as having a lot to offer. And um, so for instance, with Benedict, you know, I flew down to the South Island and we, um, from Auckland where we'd been prepping the film and we met in in a hall and that's again what often happens in New Zealand as well. I do fittings and with actors for, you know, for the first time and for, for all the fittings and bathrooms of like sort of not very salubrious production offices and things like that because um, I do a lot of films which aren't, um, you know, don't have huge budgets as well. I'm quite committed to, to those kind of films. And um, so it's just, yeah, it's very much creating a space where I, for me, where the character can kind of appear almost like an apparition you know like together you you just um we're, you know through them and trying on the clothes and and sort of just seeing how they work physically something magical happens in, in the room mm-hmm. and um you know there's always that moment where you sort of you can feel it or you know and yeah I, it's very exciting I really really love that part of my work I mean, I feel like that happens in real life too when you just put on like try on clothes and like it's just perfect for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, well, uh, finally, what was the the biggest uh, fashion emergency you've ever had on on set, and like how did you rectify it? Um, Clint, can you think of something? Are you are you still thinking? Should we come back to you? <laughs> uh, oh gosh. Um... I think, well, you know, uh, uh, it wasn't an emergency, but it was certainly nervous making. I, I, you know, there, there are times when you, you know, w- w- like dressing a thousand like background players, that's, you know, that, that's an emergency in and of itself. But I think, uh, you know, I, I think the biggest one was uh, for us, it was pretty smooth sailing until we came to the, the Amsterdam scene and um, and the beaters were still working in New York um, on the dress itself. And he had, we'd not got no fittings, nothing. And we were shooting the next day and it was shipped to us, the, the, you know, same day, like it, uh, the following day. And so um, we put it on and it fit her 
perfectly. And I, 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 I feel like, you know, that never happens, you know? And so that, that was, uh, yeah, no, that was, I was pretty close to death. Uh, that, that day. I'm a firm believer in the costume fairies. Right? Yes. Yes. Smiling on you. <laughs> yes. You, you, you did know, something right in the past life for them to, to give you that one. So. I'm shipping something from one city to the other because it was too long to drive it, right? And you're just like praying that it would get there, you know, undamaged and everything. And then anyway, you all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, uh, Janty, what about you? And the, did the costume fairies uh, smile upon you or they, they smite you? <laughs> They smiled upon me greatly on Gucci because um, I was able to have access to the Gucci archive and that was amazing. Um, but one small incident, which has probably been reported, but we arrived having spent weeks on this red satin dress and um, LG put it on and we went down to set and I was so proud of it. I was sort of trotting behind her, smiling <laughs> and Ridley went, uh? What's this? I want legs. I want to see her legs and it was to the ground. So we put her on an apple box and we cut two foot off the dress, this beautiful dress. Oh, five <laughs> camera crews just sitting around twiddling their thumbs. <laughs> well, we were all so praying that we could get a straight line. Luckily, we had wonderful Michael from New York, who did it for us. Um, no him, no nothing. We had to go straight into the shoot. That was quite hairy, but LG is great. She just got on the Apple box and got on with it. Nice. Where, where's that dress now? What happened to it? Oh, everything's still in embargo. Mm. Okay, we need we need to put that in, in the Academy Museum one day. <laughs> so like on him. I think they're going on exhibition. I think it's going to be at FIDM. Okay, good. Awesome. Uh, Kirsty, what about you? Oh, I just do not feel like I can compete at all with these guys in terms of uh, fashion. Um, um, I guess, yeah, I, I think just probably um, actors being up, turning up with very little, like um, it's not really an emergency, but I was just thinking about Ben Mendelsohn turning up in the middle of absolutely nowhere on Slow West. And all I had for him was this huge fur coat, sheepskin coat we'd made and and the, the shirts and pants and boots. And that was nerve wracking in terms of him because he's I have huge respect for him and he's quite a tempestuous kind of, you know, has a tempestuous re reputation a little bit. And um and um so I was extremely nervous about whether he would embody it step into it like it and um yeah so those those are the moments for me which um can be very nerve-wracking you're just nervous about like what they'll think <laughs> you have like well the, there's nothing else you know yeah. so it's like you're really on a wing and a prayer of um of them of the actor um yeah really sort of digging what 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 you've made and feeling that they can actually occupy it mm -hmm. uh ruth what about you on your side then <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I think part of what we do is anticipating emergencies and so that they don't really play mm. themselves out. So we don't really want an emergency, but at the same time, uh, because we're constantly thinking about what if, um, some of our what ifs are better than what we've planned months for, and it's crazy. <laughs> we'll we'll throw something up against the wall, and it'll be fantastic. And you go, yeah, that was me thinking about that just in that one moment. You know, watch me do it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's hard to answer that question because our lives are built around emergencies and and character building. It's really not like it's it's not a fashion emergency. It really is a layer on top of a layer on top of a layer. So we're ready for, you know, whatever come what may, because we are nervous before that camera rolls. We have every opportunity in the world to make a change 
and and we do sometimes just before the camera roll. So I can only think of uh, with Eddie Murphy, he usually doesn't do a lot of fitting. So I have to measure him within an inch of of his whole you know universe and his body and make sure that what that one changes, he doesn't want a choice, he doesn't want an option, he just wants that one costume in his closet. So after he's pre finished preparing uh playing maybe his guitar in his trailer um and he's ready to go to set uh or they give him a 15 minute warning he wants to go right into his dressing room put that costume on whether it's the first time or not and walk straight to set and perform and so every day is a fashion emergency for me. I feel when I'm working with him, I need to be prepared. And occasionally uh, we had some things that were stuck in customs that we were having beaded in India because, you know, he is the king of Zamunda. He has to have beaded, beautiful beaded things. <laughs> and, you know, they were too small, some of them. And I had to always have that, uh, you know, that that rabbit in my pocket to pull out and say, okay, then just wear this, you know? You, you, you always had plan A to plan Z. And, oh yeah, C, yeah. D, E, F, G. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it was great speaking with you all. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for being here and congratulations on all your great films.